check that out. We're going to build on that idea. Look, 15.2 was multiply and divide the rational expressions. 15.3 and 15.4 got to add and subtract rational expressions. And today, with complex fractions, we're going to throw all of these operations into one expression and simplify it, okay? We're going to have multiplication. Well, maybe not so much multiplication. We have division, addition, and subtraction all in one um, expression, and we're going to have to address that, okay? How do we make it simpler? Because as I look, this looks complicated in its own, uh, own way, but this definitely looks complicated. And it's very easy to look at it and go, I can't do it. I don't know where to start. We're going to go through enough of them today that you should know where to start and you should be confident in how to deal with them. Okay. But it's everything we've done so far, just repackaged. Okay. It's all the skills we've been learning in the last week. It's just repackaged to look a little different. And that shouldn't be a reason to not have success. Okay. So, a complex fraction is an expression containing one or more fractions in the numerator, denominator, or both. For example, we have 1 over AB divided by 2 over B, and we have 1 plus 3 fourths minus 1 sixth divided by 1 half plus 1 third. In the 15.2 lecture on division, we saw this. We've already seen this before. And in that section, I said, hey, this is just a fraction. 1 over AB, 1 over AB, divided by, divided by another fraction, 2 over B. We've already seen this in 15.2, this complex fraction. In fact, I talked about, hey, this is a complex fraction. It's a fraction divided by a fraction. And when it's stacked like this, it definitely can be, oh my gosh, what do I do? We don't actually have a way to deal with this in its vertical stacked form. But we have plenty of experience dealing with it in its horizontal form. So it's fraction divided by a fraction. If we rewrite it horizontally, now it becomes something we're very familiar with. We're gonna keep change flip. We keep the first fraction, one over AB. We change division to multiplication. And we flip two over B to B over two. We recognize that the B and the B cancel, and I get 1 over A times 2, which is 2A. All right, so this is going to be, you know, complex, but we're going to have some well-practiced skills so that we can be successful all the time. And you're going to see this. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to take uh, our numerator. We're going to deal with it like it's its own individual problem. We're going to make this one fraction. Then we're going to deal with the denominator. It's going to be its own individual problem, basically. We're going to simplify it. So we've simplified the top. We've simplified the bottom. And the last thing we do is we divide. And dividing stacked fractions, I understand, can give us that frowny face. But we can rewrite it horizontally, and we're very familiar with it and things. We have all the skills to be successful here. All right, so complex sounds very difficult, and I'm not saying it's easy. It's not what I'm trying to sell you on, but I am trying to sell you on the fact that you will be very capable to have success here, okay? You're going to be very capable after going through these sections of having success here. So let's take a look at uh, some problems. Well, first, we're going to get some steps. And I don't want you to write these steps down, per se, how they have them, all these words. We don't need to take four minutes to write these down. These steps say exactly what we just saw. We are going to add or subtract expressions in the numerator to form a single fraction. Comment. All right, Naomi. Um, this will be posted if you need to watch it later. It's, gonna, it's not going to disappear, okay? It'll be on uh, Blackboard still, okay? Try to get that. Okay. All right. So we have three steps here. We have add or subtract in the numerator. All this is saying is simplify the numerator. 
simplify the top, simplify the numerator to a single fraction. And then it says simplify the denominator. So we're going to simplify the top and simplify the bottom. That's what we're going to do. That's all we need to understand for our steps. They simplify the st top, simplify the bottom into single fractions. And then step two is divide. We don't need all these words to know that step two is divide. And we divide, when we divide, we're going to write it horizontally. Write our division of fractions horizontally. And then step three is simplify if we need to. Always reduce at the end if possible. So all of these words to really just do a simple process. Simplify the top, simplify the bottom. That's step one. Write it horizontally to divide. That's step two. And then reduce if possible or if necessary. That doesn't sound so bad. We've had five, a lot of five-step problems. Three steps shouldn't be so bad. The problem is, is that step one, simplifying the top, the numerator, and simplifying the bottom, the denominator, it's going to look very intimidating. But we have all the skills to be successful. We have all the skills to be successful. So let's take a look at an example. Um, here we uh, already did this. Did we already do this problem? One over AB. Yep, we already did this problem. Notice step one, simplify the numerator. It's already simplified. Simplify the denominator. Simplify the bottom. It's already done. And then we would divide by writing it horizontally. We would keep, keep change flip, keep the fraction, change multiplication and division, flip, reciprocate that fraction, and then go ahead and reduce if we need to. But we would get 1 over 2a. This type of thinking, this type of process, over and over again. Every single problem we do today, there's going to be about seven of them. We do, seven or eight. It's going to be the same process over and over. Simplify the top, simplify the bottom, write them horizontally, keep change flip, simplify at the end. Let's try this one. 6x over y over 9 over 2y. 6x over y divided by 9 over 2y. 6x over y. I think to myself, step one, is the top simplified? Yes, the top is 6x over y. It's simplified. Is the bottom simplified? 9 over 2y? Yeah, I can't do anything to simplify. It's already simplified. So now I can just jump to step two, which is write it horizontally. 6x over y divided by 9 over 2y. I'm going to write it horizontally to divide. So step two, we didn't have to do anything in step one. Step two, we're going to divide now. So keep 6x over y, change division to multiplication, flip 9 over 2y to 2y over 9, and then we can go ahead and reduce anything. Well, I see y on top, y on bottom. 6 and 9 I see is divided by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 2 is 3. And I get 2 times x times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and the x stays. 1 times 3 is 3. And leave it as 4x over 3. Don't make it 1 and 1 third. Don't make it a um, mixed number. Just leave it 4 thirds. Um, that's fine. Don't make it 1.33. Definitely don't make it a decimal. I've seen that on some of the tests and stuff. You know, you're relying on your calculator a little too much there if you're going to get to decimals. It's just not, uh, that's even worse. Decimals are even worse than mixed numbers. All right, that's not so bad. So let's add a little bit more complexity to it. Let's make it so we have to simplify the top the numerator or simplify the bottom the denominator. We have 1 plus 3 fourths minus 1 sixth divided by 1 half plus 1 third. Let's go ahead and write this down. 
It's going to be the same old song and dance, though. We're going to deal with the top on its own. We have all the skills to do this. We have all the skills to take 1 plus 3 fourths minus 1 sixth. I'm going to make 1 a whole number by putting it over 1. 1 over 1, sorry, not a whole number. I'm going to make it a fraction by making it 1 over 1 plus 3 fourths minus 6. I know the rules for adding or subtracting fractions is I better have a common denominator. So I inspect what's the common de denominator before one between 1, 4, and 6. I'm going to use 12. 4 goes into 12, 6 goes into 12, 1 obviously goes into 12. I think to myself, how did I go from 1 to 12? Well, I took it times 12. I better do the same on top. 1 times 12 is 12. How did I go from 4 to 12? Well, I took it times 3, so I better take th the numerator, 3 times 3, and get 9. Keep that plus sign here. And then keep that minus sign. But I go from 6 to 12, well, times 2, so I better take the top times 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. So now I can go ahead and add and subtract here. 12 plus 9 is 21, minus 2 is 19 twelfths. So this is the same as 19 twelfths. I'm going to divide that by simplified denominator. I'm going to Simplify the bottom. Just doing these things on their own, like their own individual problems, before bringing them back together. If I look at this in its entirety, sure, it looks complicated. It's very difficult. I couldn't do that. I, I don't know any other way other than breaking this down into separate problems and coming back together at the end. If you rely on a calculator here, you're going to do yourself some problems because typing this into the calculator. You have to be very specific and uh, to be correct. No matter, and if you don't type it in specific, it's still going to give you an answer. And you're going to be frustrated when it's wrong. The other, the next thing is that we're going to do is we're going to start adding letters in here, and you won't be able to use a calculator in that way. So it doesn't make sense to just plug this in uh, and hit equals. Okay, do the work here. I'm going to take one half plus one third. Common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6. How did I go from 2 to 6? Well, I took it times 3. So the numerator, 1 times 3 is 3. Keep the plus sign. From 3 to 6 is times 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And when I add the fractions, 3 plus 2 is 5, 6. So now that was step 1. Everything I just did here was just step 1. Simplify the top. Simplify the bottom. All right, now they're into one fractions a piece. Now step two says divide. Well, I want to write this horizontally to divide because I don't know how to divide when it's just stacked like this. I'm not sure how to do that, but I do know how to horizontally divide. Keep change flip, keep 19 twelfths, change divide to multiply, flip 5 6 to 6 fifths, and I notice some things reduce. 6 and 12 is going to reduce to 1 and 2. 6 goes into 12 two times. And then I multiply. 19 times 1 is 19. 2 times 5 is 10. 19 tenths is just fine. 19 tenths. Leave it that way. Don't make it 1 and 9 tenths. Don't make it 1.9. Definitely don't make it a decimal. 19 tenths, just fine. Improper is okay. Let's try another one. 3 fourths minus 1 sixth plus 2 divided by 1 third plus 1 half. Go ahead and write this one down. Let's try this one. All right, 3 fourths minus 1 6 plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and simplify the top. So 3 fourths minus 1 6 plus 2. This is really something that I like chapter 4 when we started doing fractions. This, we've been doing this for months now. 
A common denominator between four and six. I'm going to make two a fraction by putting it over one. And again, our common denominator between four and six is going to be 12. How did I go from 4 to 12? Well, I took it times 3, so I better take the numerator times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Keep that minus sign. Don't lose it. How did I go from 6 to 12? Well, times 2. So I better take the numerator times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 to 12 would be times 12, so I better take the top times 12. 2 times 12 is 24, and make sure we keep that plus sign. So now when I go ahead and do my addition and subtraction, 9 minus 2 is 7, plus 24 is 31, and keep the denominator. So I've got 31 twelfths so far. I'm going to divide that by something. I don't know what yet. I haven't even looked at the, 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 at the denominator yet. I was focused on the numerator because I'm doing this in pieces. Now I can focus on the denominator. One-third plus one-half. I believe we just did this. We figured this out before. Common denominator is 6. 3 to 6 was times 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. Keep that plus sign. 2 to 6 is times 3. 1 times 3 is 3. And we get 2 plus 3 is 5. 6. So I'm going to take 31 twelfths divided by 5 6. I don't know how to divide this when it's stacked like this, so I'm going to write it horizontally because I like my keep change flip. So 31 twelfths divided by 5 6. Keep change flip says 31 twelfths times 6 fifths. I look to see if I can reduce anything. Again, 6 and 12 is going to give us 1 and 2. And we end up with 31 times 1 is 31, 2 times 5 is 10. We get 31 tenths. Leave it that way. Do not make it 3.1. Do not make it being one tenth. Don't do that. Leave it 31 tenths. All right, let's add a layer of complexity. Now let's add in letters, and now we're really going to have to focus on all of our skills for combining fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, okay? So we have 1 over x plus 1 over y on top, and on bottom we have x minus y squared over x. This definitely looks like a complex fraction. And I understand if you haven't experienced this before, you know, you're going to think, oh my gosh, this is impossible. But it's really not if you take it in pieces. If you just deal with this problem on its own, and then this is a problem on its own, and bring them back um, in step two to divide, it's not so bad. So I'm going to simplify the numerator. 1 over x plus 1 over y. Now we've been working on this. What's my common denominator going to be? It's going to be x times y. Those are the factors. My least common denominator is x times y. So I think to myself, I went from x to x times y. I must have taken it times a y underneath, so I better take the numerator times y. 1 times y is just y. How did I go from y to x times y? Well, I took it times an x, so I better do the same. On top, and 1 times x is x. And we get y plus x over xy. Or you could write it as x plus y over xy. However you want to write that, y plus x or x plus y. It's okay. Same thing. So that's the numerator. I'm going to write it as x plus y over xy. So that's my top. That's my numerator. That's one piece. The other piece, x minus y squared over x. I have all the skills to do this. I'm going to make x a fraction by putting it over 1. x over 1 minus y squared over x. 
What's the common denominator between 1 and x? It's just x. I'm going to keep this minus sign. Keep that minus sign. How did I go from 1 to x? Well, I took it times x. So I better take x times x, and I get x squared. x times x is now x squared. How do I go from x to x? Well, it's just times 1, so the numerator, this fraction isn't actually changed at all. There he has the common denominator. So we end up with x squared minus y squared over x x squared minus y squared. Over X. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring. Yes. Yes. Hey. Wake up. Snoring too loud. Sorry about that. She's not going to stop. Now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. I don't like how it looks stacked. So I'm going to take x plus y over xy, divide it by the bottom fraction, x squared minus y squared over x. Keep change flip tells me keep x plus y over xy. Change tells me to change division to multiplication. And this is now going to flip to x over x squared minus y squared. And this is where we have to reduce or simplify. I notice I have an x on top. It reduces with the x on bottom. I notice I have a difference of squares. And we've spent a lot of time on factoring difference of squares. I'm going to change this to x plus y, x minus y. Difference of squares, minus two squares. And notice I have an x plus y on top that cancels with x plus y on bottom. And everything on top is canceled, so I'm left with 1 on top. And y here hasn't canceled. And I have x minus y. So 1 over y times x minus y, and you can leave it just like that. Something very complex comes a lot simpler. I'm not saying this doesn't look a little crazy itself, but it's definitely simpler than all of this. Okay? Let's try another one. 1 minus 1 over P divided by P plus W over W. 1 minus 1 over P divided by P over W plus W over P. Write this one down. Let's try it. with the numerator first, 1 minus 1 over p. I'm going to make 1 a fraction by putting it over 1. The common denominator between 1 and p is just p. Keep that minus sign. How did I go from 1 to p? Took it times p, so I better do that on top. 1 times p is p. And how did I go from p to p? Well, I recognize there is no change, so this one, the numerator doesn't change either. So I end up with p minus 1 over p. This is the same as p minus 1 over p. I don't know if that's in, I mean, now we have one fraction. So in essence, it's less, it's less complex. This is simpler than this, believe it or not. Now I have to do my denominator. p over w plus w over p. My common denominator is going to be WP. W times P. Keep that plus sign. How did I go from W to WP? Well, I took it times P underneath, so I better take it times P on top. P times P is P squared. P to WP was times W, so I better do that top as well. W times W is W squared, and we get P squared plus w squared over wp. So p squared plus w squared over wp. So we've simplified to one fraction divided by 
another single fraction. Now we can go ahead and divide. So I'm going to take p minus 1 over p divided by p squared plus w squared over wp. Keep change flip. Keep p minus 1 over p. Change division to multiplication and flip to wp over p squared plus w squared. And now we can reduce. I notice a p on bottom and a p on top. Those go to one. Those cancel to one. And now I'm in a I'm in a spot where man, in the previous example, we could factor this. And man, I'd really like to factor this, but actually, you cannot factor this right here. This is a sum of squares essentially, and we can't factor the sum. We can factor the difference. If it was a minus sign, we could factor it. It's not a minus sign. We cannot factor this. And so we end up with W times P minus 1 on top over P squared plus W squared. And that's our solution. That's as simple as we can make it. Don't think, oh, I should cross this W out and a W out, this P out and a P, and a P out. Don't do that. Those aren't factors. These, This is married. This is grouped. And you factor this out. And if it can't factor out, you can't reduce from it. Okay? So this might be one to put a star by for this reason here. What happens if we have a sum of squares? Well, it means we're kind of done with it. We can't actually factor it. And so it is what it is. All right, I've got a few more examples. We'll probably be done a little bit early today. Um, I know we've got the 1 o'clock section today. We're going to look at 15.6 in that section, so be ready for that at 1. Um, but let's take a look at uh, a few more examples. 1 over x plus 1 over y divided by x minus y squared over x. And now, if you look, look at my example, it does say method 2. I forgot to mention. In your book, there are two methods. We, we're doing method one. Method two has to do with multiply everything by the common denominator to get rid of the fraction. And I just think it muddies up the water. I think if we can, get, if we can simplify in, uh, complex fractions in one way, we don't need two. Okay? There is a second that exists. If you're interested in it, go ahead and get your ebook out and take a look at it. But we're going, to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the method one, the, the way that I've commonly used and seen. And so if you want to use the other method, look it up, learn it, do it, that's fine. But if we've got two methods going, then it's even more convoluted and there's more opportunity for misunderstanding. Let's just go get good at one method. I'm a big fan of getting good at one method before we deal with the second method. Okay. And I'm not sure the second method makes anything any easier. I think if it did, I would use it and I'd teach it to you, but I'm not sure it does. It opens it up for a little bit more, more confusion if we're not math confident, okay? So let's look at 1 over x plus 1 over y divided by x minus y squared over x, and let's use our, our the method we know how to do. So I'm going to deal with the numerator. 1 over x plus 1 over y. I'm going to combine them to one fraction. x times y, it gives me a common denominator of xy. How did I go from x to xy? Well, I took it times y, so the top had better be taken times y as well. And I get y over x plus y. Keep that plus sign. Don't lose it. To go from y to xy, I took it times an x, so I better take this top times an x. 1 times x is x. And we get x plus y, or y plus x, however you want to write it, x plus y over xy. So that's my top fraction. What am I dividing it by? I don't know yet. I haven't even looked at the denominator because I'm do it, treating it like it's a separate problem. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the denominator, x minus y squared over x. I'm going to make x 
a fraction by putting it over 1. So now I'm subtracting fractions. I need a common denominator. What's my common denominator between 1 and x? Well, 1 times x is x. It's just going to be x. How did I go from 1 to x? I took it times x. That means I better do the same to the top. x times me x squared. Keep that minus sign. And this doesn't actually change. This is the same denominator, so I get x squared minus y squared. So x squared minus y squared over x. I thought someone had a comment there. x squared minus y squared over x. So now I've got the top simplified to one fraction, the bottom simplified to one fraction. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide x plus y over xy divided by x squared minus y squared over x. Now, I think what I've seen students start to struggle with and get overwhelmed with is that there's so much stuff and it looks like if you take a step back and look at this, you go, oh my gosh, look at how unbelievable. I can't do this. Like it's such a turnoff just looking at it where we're at. But individually, as we work through it, it's just a bunch of little pieces. And this to this isn't a big deal. Fraction divided by a fraction, just rewrite it, right? And so if we can just do little things well, all told, we get to do hard things well. We're dividing fractions horizontally. We write it horizontally because I have no idea how to divide fractions vertically. So we write it horizontally. I'm going to write, keep change flip, keep the first fraction, change the division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. Now I recognize x on top, x on bottom, this x and this x cancel. And I notice I have a difference of squares. This I can factor, x minus y, x plus y. This one does factor. It's a difference. It's a minus. That's okay. And so now when I cancel, I see x plus y cancels with x plus y. And I'm left with everything on top canceled to 1. y right here didn't go away. And x minus y right here. X minus Y. And we're done. All right. One more example, and then we'll get you out of here. I know I'm going to see it at 1 o'clock today. One over k plus one minus one divided by one over k plus one plus one. We got a lot going on, okay? But it's the same song and dance. We have the skills to make this one fraction. We have the skills to make the denominator one fraction, and then we can divide at the end, and that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna deal with the numerator first. One over k plus one. Uh, minus 1. I'm going to make minus 1 a fraction by putting it over 1. Common denominator be k plus 1 and 1 is k plus 1. So that means this fraction doesn't actually change. There wasn't any change in the first one. The second one, to go from 1 to k plus 1, I must have taken it times k plus 1. So I better do that up top here, and I get parentheses k plus 1. And the parentheses are very important, very important to have these parentheses because this minus 1, this minus gets distributed. We've seen that before. So I'm going to have 1 minus k minus 1 over k plus 1. Write that down and then stare at that for a second. Make sure you're going through in your mind that process correctly. Is that exact? 1 minus k minus 1 is the result here when we combine these things. We get this one right here, minus this k, 
and then minus this positive one becomes minus one. This simplifies. One minus one is zero. So I just end up with minus k over k plus one. So the numerator here is negative k over k plus one. What is that divided by? Well, it's going to be divided by a simplified version of this denominator. Similar process, 1 over k plus 1, uh, plus 1, I'm going to make 1 a fraction by putting it over 1. Common denominator is k plus 1. So the first fraction, again, doesn't change. It's already got the common denominator. The second fraction, though, to go from 1 to k plus 1, I took it times k plus 1. That means this grouped becomes k plus 1 on top. Now, this plus sign won't have the same impact as the minus sign did previously. The plus sign isn't going to change the signs. So I get 1 plus k plus 1 over k plus 1, and that equals 2 plus k over k plus 1. And this looks crazy, but it's just all I'm doing is my simple steps that I've learned previously. I don't care how crazy it looks. I just write it down. I don't know what K is. I don't know what K plus 1 is. I don't care. I'm just writing it down. Don't get caught up in the, like, the how, how wild it looks. Just work through the process. The process doesn't change. Fraction, negative K over K plus 1 divided by 2 plus K over K plus 1. Keep change flip, negative k over k plus 1 times k plus 1 over 2 plus k. And look what happens. Those k plus 1s, they go away. Negative k on top, 2 plus k on bottom, and we're done. Do not cross out the k's. Do not factor, or do not reduce those. Don't, I mean, don't cancel because they don't actually cancel. Okay, they're married. 2 plus k is married. Back to that 2. All right. You got a lot of work uh, for tonight. You got two things due tonight, something due Sunday. We're going to meet again at 1 and do 15.6. So stay if you have questions or feel free uh, to go, and I'll see you at 1 o'clock.